The idea of a cross-curricular approach to learning is nothing new. Indeed, Galileo remarked that the universe is written in mathematical language, implying that in order to understand the world in which we live, we must have an equal understanding of mathematics. Indeed, the very idea that we might use a scientific calculator to solve mathematical equations furthers the notion of mathematics and science as interlinked disciplines. It is the cross-curricular nature between the two which this presentation will seek to investigate, alongside the use of information and communications technology, ICT, to enhance children's learning. The National Curriculum of 1988 was criticised for its rigidly subject-structured model. Being organised into discrete subjects led many practitioners to believe that integrated topic and project work was difficult, if not impossible. This seems odd when the Haddo Report, undertaken more than 60 years earlier, believed that primary education should be thought of in terms of activity and experience rather than of knowledge to be acquired and facts to be stored. It also went on to state explicitly that a project or topic approach is preferable to dividing the curriculum into separate subjects. So why then did the national curriculum step away from the cross-curricular approach? Surely the cross-curricular approach is one which allows children to facilitate their own learning and explore their own wonderings thus leading to individuals who are prepared for life in a fast-paced, ever-changing world. So long as the linking of subjects together does not threaten the character and identity of the subjects concerned, it can only seek to enhance learning, building upon learners' needs, interests and aspirations. A cross-curricular approach might be described as using combinations of subjects within project or thematic work incorporating a wide range of sources, related concepts and flexible schedules. Those who argue in favour of curriculum integration generally take a constructivist view of learning, the idea of children discovering by experiencing for themselves. This idea is certainly one that can be applied to primary science. The primary curriculum for 2014's principal focus of science teaching is Keith, in Key Stage 1 is to enable pupils to experience and observe phenomena. It makes the linking of science and mathematics explicit, stating that children should also apply their mathematical knowledge to their understanding of science, including collecting, presenting and analysing data. This is perhaps the most obvious link between the two. It would be impossible for children to report their findings without the mathematical knowledge to do this. Indeed, Haylock and Thangata deduced it is difficult to do much science without using some mathematics. Data handling is something children are exposed to from an early age. They just don't realise it. Throughout the early years foundation stage, EYFS, Children are asked to take responsibility for tidying objects away into their correct places, for example, data handling in its most simple form. Indeed, the early learning goal children are expected to achieve in relation to shape, space and measure by the end of the reception year involves them exploring characteristics of everyday objects and shapes and using mathematical language to describe them. So in order to decipher the world in which they live, children as young as four need to possess some mathematical understanding. It is not unusual, for example, to see children introduced to Venn diagrams at this stage to aid their understanding of categorising. By creating their own graphs to display test outcomes, children can begin to understand better representations of data by evaluating and comparing their completed graphs, then apply their own rules to another scientific concept. In fostering this approach, learning is child-led and they are encouraged to further their understanding through self-evaluation and discovery. Hendry draws upon the example of producing graphs to depict foods found in the home and linking this to a topic on healthy eating. One popular topic for the youngest children at the beginning of their reception year is learning about themselves. 
discrete data could be collected about hair colour, eye colour or shoe size, for example, and displayed in the form of a pictogram. Moving on from data handling, number is another key link between mathematics and science. Hendry talks about the significance numbers play in enabling young children to talk about their science and explore their findings. It is obvious that counting is a key way of unlocking scientific inquiry. With fractions occurring naturally within science, older children might go on to look at the number of seeds half a piece of fruit contains, Hendry explains, before going on to explore how many seeds might be harvested from a given number of fruits. This could then take the investigation further to look at how plants reproduce using germination experiments and examining how different variables might affect this. This might be seen as a spiral curriculum model, ensuring continual revision and progression through small and logical steps, as McAlvey explores in his article for The Guardian. The National Curriculum for 2014 does not take much time for the use of ICT within mathematics and science. In both primary and secondary schools, teachers should use their judgement about when ICT tools should be used is all it says in terms of cross-curricular links. This seems strange when the world is dominated by what Palfrey and Gasser call digital natives. That's those born after 1980 with the skills and access to networked digital technologies. Further to this, Porter believes that science offers an ideal opportunity to show the application of ICT skills in realistic and meaningful contexts. And living in a technologically rich world, most would probably agree. There are ample opportunities for the use of data loggers, for example, which allow children to move quickly into asking questions and analysing their findings. The Science Community Representing Education, SCORE, proposed using a data logger and an experiment to find which material would make the best curtains blocking sunlight from a room. In the example they give, the use of technology also allows for differentiation. Those less able can simply record whether they see a shadow or not when the light from a torch hits the inside of a shoebox, while those that are more able can measure the light levels using the data logger. Porter does warn of the misuse of data loggers, however, explaining that children's time can be better employed elsewhere if all they are using them for are glorified thermometers. There are, of course, many other opportunities for technology within the science lesson, Digital cameras, video recording equipment and spreadsheets are just a few of these which will assist children with their observation skills. Used correctly, ICT is a powerful learning tool, but used incorrectly and it could hinder the learning process. In a series of reports undertaken by the Qualifications and Curriculum Authority, QCA, between 1997 and 2001, we see that the time spent teaching mathematics and science as discrete subjects for Year 6 students dramatically increases. The schools involved spent 99.5% of the time teaching mathematics separately and 95% of the time teaching science discreetly. Boyle and Bragg attribute this to the high stakes associated with end of Key Stage 2 testing, as have Ofsted. In 2008, they claim that schools were teaching to the test, focusing upon exam passing techniques rather than developing people's wider skills and knowledge. This is everything a cross-curricular approach ought not to be. Where is the investigation? Where is that love of learning that we as teachers should be eager to embed? And more importantly, from a child's point of view, where is the fun? As practitioners, we need to find a middle ground. We should not make weak superficial links between subjects simply to tick a box, but neither should we plough forward with an unfulfilling discrete approach for child and teacher alike, which does nothing to further understanding of the world in which we live and the skills required to exist successfully within it. Although many are dissatisfied with the new primary curriculum for 2014, it does still go some way to highlight the importance of an interdisciplinary approach. 
Not only does it place importance on developing problem-solving skills within mathematics, but it also decrees children should also apply their mathematical knowledge to science and other subjects. With science, particular emphasis is placed upon investigative skills and problem-solving. Pupils should seek answers to questions through collecting, analysing and presenting data. As discussed earlier, this simply is not possible without knowledge of mathematics and confident knowledge at that. Although many believe the new curriculum for 2014 is harking back to a bygone era of learning facts by rote, the cross-curricular links are there explicitly laid out. And although it perhaps won't bring about the innovation the proposed curriculum framework the Rose Review in 2009 would have done with its thematic approach, this is just a different approach, still with room for vision and a chance for children to foster that all-important love of learning. And that surely should be at the heart of all teaching and learning.